Hi there, it's Nicole Spohr and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be creating some slimline scenes with stenciled backgrounds using brand new stamps and dies from the Colorado Craft Company May 2021 release. So many good Anita Jerem images. You guys know I love these and this is going to be so much fun. So what I did for my first card here, and I missed stenciling some of the bricks, so I am so sorry about that. This is the Lawn Fawn Brick Stencil, and I'm using a little Pink Fresh Studio Misty Coast ink to kind of ink that up. And I simply just kind of pieced it together for the slimline style card. This panel was die cut with a Hero Arts Infinity die for made specifically for slimline cards. You can also just trim it with a paper trimmer if you want to. And then I used a little post-it tape to mask off the top part of the area. And I inked up the bottom part with Pink Fresh Studio Rocky Slope ink. What I'm essentially doing here is building my background scene, which is a tile backsplash and then this gray counter so we can create this cute little kitchen scene where we've got mice brewing some coffee and enjoying some coffee and kind of just making a big mess, but so much fun. Now, in addition to the new coffee house images, which everything you see here is coffee house with the exception of the little mouse in the upper right corner, my hand is kind of covering him, um, holding the mug, that is actually from a tea time or tea time fun, I believe, stamp set that was previously released. When I was looking for images to fill my slimline scene, I love the coffee house images, but a lot of them maybe size and scale wise wouldn't work great. Like I've got the mice with the coffee press and that's a bigger image. I wanted to use the mice with the mug and then the one kind of, they're both kind of celebrating around the coffee. That's how I feel every morning. Um, and then the coffee house sign, I knew I wanted to use those. Well, there really wasn't anything else scale wise that I wanted to use there. So I ended up grabbing this image from the Tea Time Fun, which I totally love and I highly, highly recommend. I love when a company has stamps that will work at where you can mix and match. And the Anita Jerem line from Colorado Craft Company is going to be so easy to mix and match the images. I know I'm not doing a ton of that in this video. If you guys wanna see some more of that, please drop me a note and let me know because I'm actually working on some more videos and projects with the Anita Jerem images and I would love to kind of know what you guys wanna see. Um, it doesn't have to necessarily be just this release, but definitely let me know. Um, anyhow, I decided to do no line coloring again because you guys know I love it. We are going to use the Tombow dual brush markers on Bristol Smooth cardstock. The no line coloring ink is Jellyfish Lawn Fawn no line coloring ink. It is my favorite ink for no line coloring. And we're just gonna color all of these images in. Now I will tell you, I had to leave in the middle of doing this, coloring these images, and I had started to color the sign. In fact, the part of the video where I'm coloring the sign, which I think is gonna be the last thing I'm coloring on this panel, um, but anyway, I messed up the first one, so I had to re-stamp it. So I re-stamp it, I start coloring it, and the part that was the mistake is sometimes these are water-based markers and they stay wet a little bit longer, and I tried to color something where I hadn't allowed enough dry time. Um, I was coloring the coffee beans on the sign later, and they bled, and I just couldn't fix it. I tried and tried. So long story short, I re-stamped it, I started coloring. Well, I came back like maybe two hours later and tried to color um, the sign 
and I thought I could just trace over the words in Coffee House, and they had faded. So this ink is fantastic. I it you can definitely see the outline, but please note that I would recommend doing any of your um, coloring right away in case those lines fade so much that you can't see them. What I did to fix that, um, I'll talk about here when we get to that part of the design. Now I thought it would be fun to do a little floral design on this saucer for my teacup. So I'm adding a little green dot and then just kind of taking the tip of the bullet part of the mark or brush tip, pardon me, of the marker and adding little flower petals. This adds a really fun touch to the saucer. We'll also add a little flower to the larger mug here in a second for this mouse we're coloring now. I generally like to do about one image at a time and just kind of work my way around. Um, these are pretty detailed. They're so much fun to color. I kept my color palette really simple. You're gonna notice a lot of repetition in color. I have listed my marker colors across the top of the screen, as well as listed them out on the blog post that coordinates with this video. So definitely check that out. There is a link below the video here. Um, if you want more details or want to be able to, you know, look at all of those marker colors a little bit slower than the sped up version across the top of the scene top of the screen each mouse is just a couple of colors and then a baby pink for the insides of the ear now i will tell you i accidentally colored part of what i think is the handle for the mug with the browns for the mouse but i did fix that by just going over it with the dark kind of i want to say it's not really purple, it's not really red. I purposely picked these colors. They're dark plum, port red, and then there's like a mauve and a blush. So it's really a nice kind of in-between. I love the color combination. Something a little bit different, I guess. And so I will wait to decorate that mug till those, those inks have kind of dried for a minute. Same goes for detail with my fine tip black pen. I have found that if you go directly after you color the images with the water-based marker and you try to color over that with your black pen, um, it sometimes can bleed. I've had it happen so many times and it, every time I'm so mad at myself because I know better. So I have learned to let it sit for a minute. You'll notice that the mouse there up the upper right I have not gone in with the detail for its face yet, but the other two have. So I'll kind of color an image, then go back to a previous one and draw in that detail before it fades too much. I love this image of one mouse holding up the other one to push, push on the coffee press. So funny. And don't be afraid to go back over your images if you need to. I wouldn't go over them too many times because the paper will start to pill a little bit with these markers especially, but you can go back over them, especially if you want to let it sit for a second, kind of like we do for adding in all of the black pen detail. Um, if you let it sit, you generally can go back in and add another layer of color if you want to deepen and darken some areas. I just added the little flower to that coffee mug. I love how he's hugging it. I think that's cute. I'm sure it's supposed to be a tea since it's from the tea set, but we're going to call it a coffee mug because I think it'll work here. Now we are gonna pull in a couple more colors for the coffee press. So um, inside, of course, some nice dark browns for the coffee, um, and then some grays for some of the parts of this design as well. And I even went back in with my deeper, darker colors, needing to kind of add in more of that as I'm working. And just kind of get that right the correct shading 
There are some individual coffee beans. They are so teeny tiny. Um, I stamped three of them there. They're kind of up at the top. I will color those in with my dark chocolate and saddle brown colors. I ended up stamping that another time because I felt like I needed more coffee beans to scatter throughout my card. I also ended up stamping a individual saucer from the Tea Time Fun stamp set um, off camera to go just I felt like I needed to fill in a little bit on the right side of the card which you'll see as I start to put the card together here in a minute. I have mentioned this in past Colorado Craft Company videos, but one of my favorite, favorite things that they do is they create dies that die cut so close to the stamp line and really cut detailed cuts. I love it because it's going to cut the inside of the handle of the coffee press. It's going to cut little areas, um, the, the handle of the coffee mug, all of those little bits and pieces die cut out, which I think is fantastic. I love that we're not left with this huge, big, white, um, kind of, you know, empty space. Like where the, the mice are one on top of another to press down on the coffee press, it's going to die cut in between there, um, where sometimes you don't get that with companies. So I really, really love that attention to detail from Colorado Craft Company. Our sign's gonna have a nice little kind of like wood outline border frame. I guess it's more of a frame. Um, and then the inside we're going to just match to the dishes and everything we've got going here with some nice pinks. Do keep in mind, this is the image that got colored and the shading didn't go quite as planned. Um, that's what I was talking about a little bit ago where the inside of this um, that says the coffee house was not legible. It was super hard to read. It's not this one. This one's still pretty legible, but when I re-stamped and colored it, and so what I ended up doing was just taking my paper, placing it in my Misty, um, masking off the outer um, frame of this, and then stamping it with a brown ink that I could then, if there was any light areas, I just traced over them with my chocolate Tombow marker using the bullet tip. So it still has that very hand-drawn type of look anyway, but that kind of just adds to it. But I love that little sign. I think that's really cute and a great addition to the card. Now I have all of my images die cut and we're ready to build our scene. I love stenciling for the fact that it really makes a background scene creation so easy. We're gonna start with the coffee press. It is totally fine that the mouse ear is kind of up above the parameter of our background. This is slightly smaller than a slimline style card. Um, a standard slimline measures three and a half by eight and a half inches. It's still going to be within the slimline style there, um, but it just is up a little bit above there, which I kind of like. Adding my little coffee beans and then just kind of building the scene. I'm trying to only move a few things at a time so that I don't kind of lose where I kind of like everything to look. Aren't these fun? And I love how it pops off of the great kind of like subway tile looking backsplash and then that gray countertop. How cute are all of these little critters? And here is that little saucer that I'm going to add. I like it because it looks like he's lifted up his coffee mug from that saucer so that kind of all matches. Once we have all of our images glued down, we're ready to add our sentiment. 
I picked Everything Gets Better With Coffee. There are several others in this stamp set. Um, this is a six by eight stamp set. So this is one of the bigger Anita Jerram stamp sets from Colorado Craft Company. Um, lots of great options here. The coffee house really isn't, a, in my opinion, a sentiment. It is more of an embellishment. And so I am gonna stamp against the subway tile, my sentiment using that dark chocolate Simon Says Stamp ink. I like that instead of a black because the brown really goes well with my coffee theme. The final thing we're gonna do is take some Trinity Stamps Coffee Bean Heart Accents. You guys know I love my little heart accents and these have the perfect name to go with the images on this card as well as the perfect color. And we're just gonna scatter these all over and then glue this panel to a slimline card base to complete the design. I think all of you coffee lovers are going to love this stamp set. I know I definitely do, and I can't wait to stamp some of the other images from this set to make some more cards for all of my coffee-loving friends. Next up, I am a dog lover, and I had to use this awesome new stamp set to create this fun birthday card. It has these adorable dogs. We're gonna start again by building our stenciled background. I have another panel. It is exactly the same size. It's a little smaller than the slimline style card. And we are gonna start with a Lawn Fawn simple grassy hillside stencil. And we are gonna use some Lawn Fawn artichoke ink to ink up the grassy landscape border along the bottom edge. This is a new stencil from Lawn Fawn. Lawn Fawn has had a new release this past week as well. This has been a huge week for brand new amazing releases. Um, but I love the addition of stencils that work with the slimline style so we're not trying to have to piece everything together all the time. I know I did that for the last card. The bricks were kind of easy. This would have been a, maybe a little bit more difficult. Once I have that grassy border stenciled, I am going to remove my stencil, clean it so I don't accidentally transfer that ink from the stencil to my project. And then I'm going to use the other side. So in this, not other side, the top, I use the bottom to stencil, but the top is the, exactly the same, but I can use it to mask off that bottom area so I don't get ink on it from my sky and then we're going to take some lawn fawn slimline cloudy stencils and create our sky so i'm going to do this with a little lawn fawn kitty pool ink these two colors artichoke and kitty pool have been my go-to lately for creating grass and clouds i really really like these in this Slimline Cloudy Stencil collection, there's two stencils. Um, one has a little bit, I would say, puffier clouds, and then this one has a little bit more smaller clouds. You can definitely mix and match and use them together, but I'm only gonna use this one here, and I am simply going to flip it from one side or from the top to the bottom and back and forth to fill in all of that area up above. But you can see how by masking off the grass using the stencil, I'm not gonna get any blue ink into that green area. We're simply going to continue to work our way all the way up until we have that sky filled. One of the great things about doing a slimline style card is it often gives you much more real estate to create an extended scene, which I really, really love. Um, and in this case, I can use the, Im I think I'm using all of the images I am from this particular four by six stamp set. Um, and even for the first card I did, the coffee house card, I was able to use a lot more images than what I probably could have used on a standard A2 size card. So it just gives you that room to spread out your scene and definitely add some more things or maybe use some additional images. 
Now we're going to stamp our images from the stamp set on some Bristol Smooth cardstock. Again, I am using the Jellyfish Lawn Fawn No Line Coloring Ink to stamp these. And then we're going to color everything in with our Tombow markers. I'm going to start with the first dog hanging over this ginormous ball. I have to say, um, I have a small dog, but he thinks he's big, I guess. We have this deflated football. It just needs to be aired up, but what's so funny about it is he realized because it doesn't have air in it, he can carry it around, and he's just a little shizu, um, but he really thinks that he's tough and he fights it. We laugh. That's what this reminds me of, is that the dog is with this ginormous ball, but dogs will be dogs and they love them, so it's just funny. I used yellow, gold, and peach. I don't think it's peach, I think it's yellow, but the official name is peach for my first dog and then a little chocolate for the nose. For the grass along the bottom, that's going to be some dark olive and light olive. And then our ball is going to be carmine and blush. Now I found I didn't think the colors blended super great just using the markers. Um, that is one thing about the Tombows that is a big difference from Ziggs. Ziggs would probably give me a much easier blend. Plus, they tend to love to play on the Bristol Smooth cardstock where I can get um, rid of some of those harsh lines. So you can really see I've got harsh lines here. If I color over it too much, I am going to run the risk of pilling the paper. So I simply grabbed a water brush pen and blended those colors out a little bit. Um, it's the only spot on my card that I added water. Going to move on to our next sweet puppy. This one we're going to use chocolate and light sand. This is a little bit darker than the color combination I used for the mice on the first card, so it'll give you a little bit darker version. I like to kind of tr I ended up tracing out the dogs with the bullet tip. And then I would go back in with the, the brush tip and add a little bit wider line so there's a little bit more color to grab onto so that when I take that lighter color, it's easier to pick some of that up. Uh, uh, sorry, can't talk. Pick some of that up and pull that color out into the rest of the image. So, so sweet. Little baby pink for the inside of the ear. And then of course our greens for that little bit of grass he's standing on. He's got balancing a bone on his back foot and also on his nose. We'll just use a couple of nice light gray colors here for the bones, just really giving it a bit of an outline, not a ton of color. I'm not even coloring all the way in, just a little hint. For his little bandana, we're going to go back to Carmine and Blush again. And then I am going to take, um, I used the brush tip and I just drew in very, very fine, fine lines to give it a little bit of a pattern. And then the collar or the bandana that the yellow dog is wearing is going to be blue. Finally, we're going to use warm gray five and warm gray two for the last sweet puppy. Just tracing out with my darker color first using the brush tip to pull a little bit of that darker color out and then we'll use the lighter color for our shading. Okay. 
and he is balancing a ball on his nose. He also is wearing a little bandana. And then there's an individual ball that we will color in another shade as well. So the dogs are all fairly neutral. I went with a big pop of color for that big red ball. So I'm gonna pull in a little blue, a little yellow, just with some of the other accents, bandanas, balls, all of that good stuff for a little bit more pops of color throughout this card design. Again, what's so amazing is the dies are gonna die cut very, very close to everything here. So they look fantastic on that stenciled background. Here is a little cyan and process blue. And then I thought against the black of or dark gray of this dog, some yellows would look really pretty. So we're using, again, it's called light orange and peach, but to me it looks yellow. So we'll do that for the ball and that final bandana and then die cut all of our images. We're gonna lay everything out, kind of get a feel for where we want our images to go and where we want to put our sentiments. Um, this is something that I played around with. I kind of switched up and then I ended up going right back to what I originally planned. So I probably should have just gone with that to begin with. I love the little extra bones and things. They add so much to a complete scene card here. So I kind of thought I would pull in a sentiment from another stamp set, and then I didn't really think size and scale wise that was gonna work, but I'd like to kind of show you my design and thought process so you get an idea of how I get to where um, the card is finished. And then I love that there are a couple of sentiments from this stamp set that work inside of that big red ball. We're going to use happy birthday, but there's also the HBTU to U T U. Oh my gosh, you guys. Um, anyway, there's a couple of great options there. So you can decorate that ball or you can leave it you don't have to add anything. I am gonna add a little happy birthday. We're gonna stamp that with a clear embossing ink and heat emboss with white embossing powder. The rest of our sentiments are gonna be stamped with colorful inks right over that sky. We're gonna use a nice dark blue and red, both from Lawn Fawn. We're gonna use fish tank and lobster for our sentiments. I wanna go ahead and kind of get all of our images placed down here first. I love how they look against this stenciled scene. Bright, fun colors. Just makes for a really, really fun birthday card design. Now, there is an Anita Jerem little um, signature in the stamp sets and I ended up adding it to both of my cards. So I stamped that one with artichoke green right over the green stenciled uh, grass and on the first one I used just some gray ink to stamp it so it's really subtle but I like that little nod to the artist especially with something like this where um, these definitely have a distinctive look a lot of you um, have some books that she has illustrated and so um, I just think that that's kind of a neat thing and because they aren't part of any of the stamps in this partic these particular stamp sets, I went ahead and just stamped that on each of my cards. Here is the stamping and embossing of the happy birthday. You'll notice with my sentiments in the sky, I did mask off the uh, paw tee um, and stamped that with the lobster red ink so it stood out and all of the rest was stamped with fish tank ink. I want to make sure I have good coverage with my clear ink before I sprinkle on that white embossing powder and heat set it. I also want to minimize warping that may happen with this panel. So once I sprinkle on the white embossing powder, I will let my heat tool heat up for 
maybe 30 to 60 seconds away from the paper before I bring it over to the paper and heat set that really quickly. Then we're going to adhere this to a slimline card base and finish the card with a little scattering of some blue pool droplets from Lucy's Little Things. They're kind of a beautiful uh, translucent blue heart accent. Thank you guys so much for joining me today for these fun stenciled scene backgrounds featuring Colorado Craft Company Anita Jerem images. The supplies I use to create my cards are listed and linked below the video here on YouTube. Here is another video featuring Anita Jerem images that you might be interested in. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell to never miss a new card making video. Thank you so much for joining me today and we'll catch you next time.